Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration. Today I want to talk about two kinds of programming that you might have received in childhood if you were raised by a narcissist. And also this can happen even in adulthood and long relationships, but predominantly when it starts in childhood, and how these patterns can still be affecting you in your adult life now, in relationships and friendships and work and family, even in services that you hire people to do for you, like you go to the hairdresser or you call a plumber or something like this. So the first one, the first pattern is feeling like you have to answer. That's when someone's knocking at your door, they're calling you on the phone, they're texting you, they're emailing you, social media, any way of trying to get your attention. When you feel like you have to answer and you fear that if you don't answer right away, you're going to get in trouble. Does that sound familiar? So if that does sound familiar, probably what happened was as a kid, when your narcissistic parent or both parents in some cases called you, you jumped, you ran to their beck and call because if you didn't, you were in big trouble. Right? This came from their sense of entitlement where you existed only to serve them. So you got trained that when someone called your name, you dropped what you're doing and you ran. And it even created this whole like nervous system response, like gotta go right now, gotta go right now. An extreme form of anxiety, you have to go and answer that. So what happens is this programming lasts through adulthood and it's dangerous because it sets you up to appease abusive people. So when abusive people demand something from you and you give it without questioning, and you're like, why did I do that? And this can really happen if you've been sexually abused as a child and then as an adult, still finding it very challenging not to say no, that you just go along with it, right? But this could be even little things, like somebody wants you to do something or they ask you for this or that or they just demand to know everything interrogation style and you feel like you have to answer them. Like if someone asks you something that you don't wanna share, you feel like you have to answer them anyways and you have to give them this whole complete answer because that's what your narcissistic parent might have done to you. Like they grilled you for that information. So what happens is abusive relationships trained you to drop what you're doing and answer others immediately for the fear of getting punished. Punished with silent treatment, guilt tripping, blame shifting, false accusations, or not to mention the incessant bombardment of texts and phone calls and yelling your name and knocking on your door until you give in. You know what that's like? That's the person who like they call you and you don't answer and they don't just like leave a voicemail or leave a text message or just wait for you to call them back. No, they keep calling you and it's like you're working or you're doing something, you pick up your phone and you have like 10 missed calls. That's what I'm talking about, that kind of bombardment. It can cause an extreme form of anxiety. And that's, that's the intention actually, is to give you so much anxiety to the point where you just give in and you, you agree to the contact to calm down that anxiety, but then you open yourself to more abuse. So in order to overcome this pattern of feeling like you have to answer, you need to get comfortable with the anxiety of someone bombarding you and trying to get you to respond while you're not responding as well as overcoming the sense of guilt and obligation, especially in family situations where you might feel like you owe them an immediate answer or like, you know, your mother is calling you, your mother is texting you, uh, now she's escalating and now she's afraid that you're, you're dead, she wants to call hospitals, because like a lot of manipulative people will do that. You know, if you don't answer them immediately, they're gonna threaten to call the police or hospitals or, you know, they're going to tell you that they just can't sleep, not knowing that everything's not okay. They'll, they'll really pull on your strings like that. So you have to be able to stand up against that guilt and obligation. It's a false guilt. But in family situations where you don't have to answer that, you feel like you have to, but you actually don't have to answer that if that's not okay for you in that moment. When you truly value yourself and your life, you will stop dropping everything you're doing, whether it's work or tasks that you're doing or hobbies, just things that you enjoy. You're going to stop dropping that stuff immediately to answer someone and you'll get back to them at a time that's convenient to you or not at all if you don't want to respond to them. 
So now you need to give yourself permission to change this pattern. And what I found really helps me is the mantra, you don't have to answer that. So the phone calls are coming, the text messages are coming, someone's dinging on your doorbell, and you don't want to get that. You tell yourself, you don't have to answer that. And you keep reminding yourself that until you calm down the anxiety. Eventually, you're going to find this is a lot easier, that you just start to value yourself and your time and your energy so much this isn't even an issue. When abusive people are trying to get your time in that way, that's just going to turn you off. You're just going to have less time and less energy for people like that. The second pattern is related, but it's kind of just the opposite. It's speaking up and asking for what you need or speaking up and talking about what's fair or not fair and voicing your dissatisfaction with someone or something. You might find that you stop yourself from speaking up because you fear punishment or attack. So why is this? Well, if you were raised with a narcissistic parent in childhood, if you spoke up for these causes, you got in trouble. Maybe, you know, you were you were sent to your room, you were grounded. Maybe you were just told that you're bad for having needs and opinions and feelings or thinking that something isn't fair or okay with you. Maybe you were laughed at and ridiculed if you expressed something like this. So this causes you to shut down, to not speak up for yourself. It causes crushing anxiety and dread at the idea of having or wanting to speak up for yourself. It creates this psychological paralysis even as an adult when it comes to speaking up for yourself and your needs. So what happens is because of the childhood programming or maybe, like I said in the first one, maybe you got programmed into this as an adult if you had a really long relationship with someone, but you got programmed to expect that if you speak up, you will be punished through the silent treatment, told that you're wrong for perceiving things in that way, have your words turned around on you, receive false accusations, or even that person brings up a way that you failed in the past in order to take the focus off of what they did just now to blame you instead and really confuse you. That's what you're expecting. Like You'll notice, and I notice this in myself, when you go to set a boundary with someone now, as you're working through the the healing process, you go to set a boundary, your mind will already start to create the story of what that person is going to respond. You're already defending yourself against what that person is going to respond, but you haven't even seen the response yet. We don't even know who we're dealing with yet. We don't even know how they're going to respond, but we expect that. So that's why we need to upgrade this belief system, upgrade this program and this pattern so we can have different kinds of interactions with people. In order to overcome this pattern of speaking up for yourself, you need to get comfortable speaking your truth and be willing to be met with someone else's anger or attack because you didn't do what they wanted or you're not being the pushover that they're looking for or that they expected. So now you want to speak up for yourself with your voice and with your actions and then let others reveal who they are. So a mantra that I found really helpful for overcoming this pattern is I have the right and responsibility to speak up for myself. I have the right and responsibility to speak up for myself. Now, I want to give you some tips to overcome these two patterns. The first one is to adopt an innocent until proven guilty mindset. People will reveal themselves. Even the most covert manipulators will eventually become overt and and reveal themselves as you set boundaries and as you speak up for yourself. So give people the opportunity to reveal themselves to you before you make a judgment. Not everyone is a narcissist or a manipulator. The trouble is that it might look like that for a while in the earlier parts of the healing process when that's the filter that you're seeing everything through. Now, in that initial stage of healing, that's normal because you've just been through a massive betrayal and deceit and gaslighting. Maybe you're waking up to the fact that you have a narcissistic parent and you've been gaslit and deceived your whole life. So naturally you look around you and you find a lot of other people like that and then you're afraid that everybody's like that, but that's not the case. And sometimes what might look like one thing on the surface actually isn't. So sometimes when we're projecting all of those fears and all of these recent discoveries onto new people, we might be projecting something that actually isn't there. Maybe we didn't give them the opportunity 
to reveal who they are. We just placed it on there and we walked away. So be careful because there are good people in the world, right? They're not just all manipulators and abusers, even though the initial experience as you're coming into this realization might look like that. Don't create stories in your mind before you investigate the facts and give people an opportunity to reveal who they are. This is something I learned from some dating coaches. You know, they were talking about recognizing, for example, whether a guy is ghosting you or if he's just doing the masculine energy thing, which is normal. The masculine energy enters and leaves. It enters and leaves, just like the masculine sex, right? Even though not all men are predominantly masculine energy. Sometimes um, there, there's a flip in, in polarity. But the masculine energy tends to come near in a relationship to a woman and then need to pull away for a short period of time in order to process emotion and deal with his own insecurities. That's not a manipulation. That's somebody dealing with their stuff in order to come back. And sometimes it's not really obvious, especially if you're just getting to know this person. And so that's why you want to adopt an innocent until proven guilty mindset. Allow the person to reveal themselves. You'll know. Your body will know. Your intuition will know. You will know by how this person comes back at you, if they come back at all, whether they were just going away to process and deal with their own stuff or whether it was a manipulation and actually a ghosting. Another tip is be willing to seek first to understand others if you want to influence them. That's Stephen Covey in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in this case, you know, we're talking about having people respect your boundaries and not always being available for them and also being willing and able to speak up for yourself and to state a boundary. So be willing to understand others if you want them to respect your boundaries. Don't just assume that they're going to respect your boundaries or they need to respect your boundaries. Some people won't. And some people just simply don't know that you have a boundary or don't know that you have a standard around that until they cross the line and then you need to make it clear. Some people are willing to rise to your standards. Some people are willing to honor you that way. Seek first to understand where they're coming from before you make that judgment. Give people the opportunity to meet you with self-responsibility and respect. If they don't, then set the boundary and get them out of your life, but give them the opportunity to rise to those standards. So how do you know if they're taking self-responsibility and honoring you with respect? Well, in the first case, if you don't respond immediately to their calls, to their texts, to them showing up at your door unannounced, if they get upset at you and feel entitled at you being there at their beck and call, that's not good. If they have some way of blaming you or shaming you or putting you down or turning things around at you because you didn't answer, that's not a good thing. If the person rolls with it and it's no big deal, then that's a good sign. Now, if that person, in the case of number two, if that person did something that wasn't respectful to you and you speak up about it, how do they respond? Now, of course, be sure that you're approaching them in a graceful and respect respectful way. You don't want to yell at them or call them names or insult them. That's certainly not going to help you influence anybody else. But if you say it in a respectful way and you speak up for yourself, how do they respond? Well, basically anything other than I'm sorry, I agree means that person doesn't take you seriously. So if that person comes back at you with a bunch of excuses and they're rationalizing and justifying this and why, you know, it has to be that way and blah, 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 or they're trying to tell you that you're wrong for wanting that, for thinking that for perceiving things in that way and they're really now they're like attacking you and they're using false accusations that person is probably not respecting you i'm sorry i agree with you those are the first two things that person needs to say and then next you need to observe their actions to see if their actions are in alignment with those words the very first time this happens because i promise you if you have been used to speaking up for yourself and getting shut down and put down and told that you're wrong the very first time that you express that boundary to someone and they respond without that usual story where they're going to put you down or they're going to blame shift you and attack you and all that. The very first time that happens that you meet a decent human being who doesn't respond in that way and their first response to you is, I'm sorry, 
I agree. You're going to just be shocked. You're going to be absolutely shocked that people actually do respond that way, that not everyone is a toxic person trying to get what they want from you. So recognize who you're dealing with. Allow them that opportunity to prove and reveal who they are. When manipulators reveal who they are, if you don't answer immediately or if you speak up for yourself, they reveal who they are, the toxic ways that I've already explained, walk away. These two boundaries where you don't answer immediately, you're kind of unavailable for whatever reason, or you speak up for your needs, for your feelings, for your perceptions of reality, these two boundaries tend to reveal manipulators very quickly. There's nothing you can do to change them. And continuing to have any kind of connection with them is only going to bring you inevitable harm. So the sooner the better, walk away. Understand that sometimes people cut corners not because they're manipulative, but because they're lazy and they've been conditioned to think that behavior is normal and acceptable. Maybe no one ever held them to a higher standard or called them out. Maybe that's what all their friends do. Maybe that's what all the reality TV series and other movies and TV series that they watch tell them to do and that standard and normal. Maybe they've just never realized that's not. So allow them the opportunity. Teach them with firmness but with compassion and a little bit of humor, how to treat you if they want to be part of your life. Check your body, your gut, your intuition first. Is everything okay? Is anything off? Always listen to those signals. And if you haven't seen the video I did recently about two weeks ago on that, it's about listening to your body and identifying a toxic person or situation. I'm going to put the link for that video in the, in the video description below. You can open that the more information and you can get the link to that video. It's really important always to listen to your body, to your gut, to your intuition. It will always tell you. Sometimes that's the only way to tell if this person is manipulating you or if there's really something going on with them, and this is just how they're showing up in this moment, your body will let you know. When you get that weird feeling in your stomach or the anxiety or any of those things that I mentioned, that's when you know something's not right. So always be listening to your body. And finally, check in with reality. Right? This is a mental exercise. What's real here? One of my clients said this to me. She was going through this with her mom, bombarding her with texts and phone messages and all this. And, you know, she was trying to not get swept up in all the guilt of feeling like she had to respond. And she asked herself, what's real here? And that's a great question. What's real here? Well, what's real here is mom isn't getting what she wants. And mom is using a bunch of covert, aggressive, manipulative tactics to try to get what she wants, to try to make you feel like you owe her that and that she's entitled to that. So don't get twisted up into a narcissist reality paradigm. Remind yourself what's real here. What's real here is you're simply not getting back to that phone call because you have other things to do. Unsubscribe from the narcissist reality and own your reality. You want to give yourself that pep talk and overwrite the reality of the fears and the guilt and the obligation and all of that. Remind yourself what is real in the situation. So have you struggled with one or both of these patterns in your life? If you have, feel free to share below in the comments what are some ways that you're overcoming this? Did you have a revelation right now listening to this video? Maybe you never even noticed this was a pattern in your life or that was why that pattern was there or that you have permission to do the things that are going to protect yourself to honor your own standards, your own energy, and your own life. I'm sending you all a big hug.